Let's get it, Sam. So this is good, Scott. Yep. Yeah. Camera. Hello. Blake. Camera. I'll take one. Two, one. Alpha. Take three. Ready. Action. Episode one, oof, man. So, uh, what kind of idiot drops out of Cornell? I mean, this one is a, a fun one because this one was the beginning of it all for John and I. The like, intro. Kind of like this. And then, see the hiring sign. And then, see her in your character. It's kind of sitting here the whole time. Food service? You can do better than that. No, oh, I think. We are seeing more particular, but like we leave a lot of little things that kind of describe Ryan's character. I feel like from the first story. thing we see from him, like yeah, like going down that hallway, we come in and he's reading, but he's also like smoking a joint. You got ten seconds before I call the cops. Put this thing out, we. He is like a guy that you know is intellectual and like yeah. has that kind of culture to like want to learn more. Yeah, but he's also, also has, recreational and fun. Like. Yeah, <laughs> so we kind of have his two characters yeah. in his hand in the like in the first uh, part of the show. It's like it's fun because I think uh, especially John and I are writing this, we were at the point where like you know we know like control our life. We were like post college, yeah. and we were just like we didn't know what we were we doing. We really like Ronnie was like us. Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Next time I see you, we'll be on set. Oh my god, it's this is it, man. This is it. We are fucked. And then, you know, through the episode, we kind of just go through Ronnie's life, which I think, uh, which was cool because I think a lot of people can relate with because this is a kid that really just wants to do the best he can by everyone. And he's trying his best, but it's yet to get anywhere. Like, I think um, we kind of sum it up a lot in that diner scene where, like, you know, he just feels powerless. So what keeps you going? Most days I'm not even sure. It, it, it used to be the idea that I could make a difference. That, that I made my life mean something. But then I realized that the world is built for me to fail, so... In the grand scheme of things, I can't control my life. Hmm. It's like he yeah. wants to change the world, but he doesn't see a point, you know? He has no control of his life, yeah. he's been pushed around. He has all these jobs, and most of them he doesn't even want to get because it's really just like he doesn't know what he wants to do with his life. But you know he's being pushed in a situation because his grandpa needs money, and he can't yeah. just let him go without Mr. it. Mr. Jacobson's breathing down his neck. He's gonna pull all the stuff in the dumpster. Yeah. <laughs> I want you and all your shit out of here. Do you understand me? Where are we gonna put it? The fucking dumpster. You know where that is, right? You want us to put our shit in the fucking dumpster? How's that gonna work? Like episode one really kind of like. It kind of buckles you in. Like, it's not, I would say it's like the roller coaster yet, but it's definitely like, hey, this is where we're at, yeah. and this is like where we're at before we take off. Yeah. And I think Alexander does a great job in showing, uh, you know, the inner struggle in that character. Like, yeah, Ronnie has a lot of jokes, a lot of humor. Yeah. But you can see he's really kind of uh, hurt throughout mm -hmm. the series and struggling with his own purpose in the world. So, in episode one, Ronnie is just, he's done life is something that he has to do it's kind of like a going to sleep is about the best thing you can do because you're not living it's like a temporary death but he knows he has to wake up again and do stuff he's trying to be helpful but he can't help himself so how is he gonna help anyone else or nothing it's the exciting thing about episode one is that it's like whoa all right you know it seems like a normal thing, like a normal thing, and then suddenly you meet Ray, and it's like, okay, this isn't gonna be an average show about like some random. Yeah, thing. like Ray's not an average guy. Episode one, I think, uh, I don't know, it shows what kind of idiot dropped out of Cornell, but yeah. <laughs> it's not really an idiot. It's just 
you know, a normal person struggling. Like, I think yeah. we all are, and I think a lot of people are going to fall into Ronnie and fall in love with uh, all these characters that we yeah. see coming through. Gramps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe not Mr. Jacobson, but maybe at the yeah, end. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you love to hate him. You love to hate him, yeah. And I gave you 15 days. 15 days! Can you even count to fucking 15? Huh? Is that what? Do I have to give you less than that? Only single digits? Is that all you can count to? I had a date tonight. Have you had one of those this century? I was gonna take her somewhere really nice, and we ended up at fucking Chili's because of you, because you won't pay your fucking rent. Episode two. Buy me a coffee. I think. Buy me a coffee. Buy me a coffee really encapsulates. I mean, I think in even writing this, we were like, this is kind of the fun and games. Episode. Yeah, yeah, the fun and games part of it about like showing off the power, learning mm -hmm. the power, learning the. Like the just having fun with the power, yeah, learning what you can do with it. Um, Ronnie gets like chased down. Mm -hmm. Well, so it starts with him like chasing after Mr. Jacobson, yeah, and, like confused because he obviously doesn't know what happened, but, yeah. Um, because episode one ends with just in such a way that like he just this overly bearing guy just like completely goes silent, turns around, and just says, like, Yeah, you can have more time, okay. You can have a couple more days. Yeah, it's uh, this episode is very much a kind of like fun journey because we, as the audience, are discovering the power with Ronnie. Yeah. Um, we then go into then we go later on to the harbor where we see him selling his stuff for more money so we can pay this rent. Yeah. Um, but he meets up with an old friend who like has it all yeah and we, then just kind of just really pummels into Ronnie. Just, i've been great my internship oh. just turned into this big job i got my place right over right over there oh, right over there right there with the flag right on right the water there. with the flag dang it's and i think uh like similar to relating ronnie's character i think we've all kind of had that where we go on like maybe not in person but on instagram or facebook we have that friend that's like oh yeah i'm doing great or like i just got this yeah. new car and in that moment, you just kind of feel less than, and so we're, we're already kind of kicking Rhino always down. But then, yeah. like, we almost kind of lift him up in showing him this kind of light of this ability he has. Look, man, just give me the money. I need it for my grandpa, please. Give me my grandpa, money, money, money. I don't know where it is. I, I was supposed to meet my friend up the street. He has it. It's the first time we. Uh, hit at the nosebleed, yep. mm -hmm. which is kind of a, um, a key consequence of yep. this power that we'll begin to later, more later on. Well, then he, then he goes, like, he's like on top of the world, yeah. he buys a coffee, makes this random poor guy buy a coffee, <laughs> and uh, then he goes and goes to Gramps, and then he's like living the high life, he's like, I have, I have superpowers, yeah, I got yeah. free coffee, he can got my money fight back. back, you know, I have some control, and, and then, then Ron has a whole heart to heart with Grants where he tells him, to, like, tell him how he actually feels, and that's where you kind of see, like, the downsides of the power. Is that how you really feel about me? No, no, look, that, that's not what I really meant, Ronnie, I mean, I don't, I think you're brilliant and burning with potential, but you waste it. You wasted away college, and now you waste every day of your life. I really like that scene because I think, again, in relating to Ronnie, like we all have that moment where like we know someone feels away, but like they won't say it because they're family. Yeah. And now Ronnie now has the power sense. to like bring that out of him and I feel like it has those crushing words like you know I'm, I'm not sure you'll ever amount to anything and I think that is yeah, visceral that, especially yeah. for someone that like it's from from your grandfather that you yeah, live yeah, with and that yeah like, that would crush is your world yeah so I think uh but I think it leaves Ronnie in a more interesting place because we kind of take his character like all right he's gonna push this you know he's, yeah you know he's, he's like, gonna I'm, show he's gonna prove himself yeah now. That he can be something, and yeah. I think that leads into the launching pad for episode three. Believe in the chi! Believe in the chi! Believe. Oh.